So hello everyone. Today we are gonna know about the spiritual scientist Jane Roberts and the wisdom she got from that. Jane Roberts' life and influence. Jane Roberts was an American author and who channeled sage into her consciousness. Together with her husband Robert Bats, she produced numerous books and lectures that became the foundation of the state material. Some of the notable state books were Sage Speaks, the, Na the Nature of the Personal Reality, and the State Material. Some of the key themes, key themes in the state wisdom was re reality creation and the belief system. It is usually considered that, our ha that how our thoughts, a belief system, and our emotions help us create the reality which we are living today. The consciousness and the nature of time. The state material challenges conventional notions of time and presents a perspective that suggests the past, present, and the future exist simultaneously. By expanding the understanding of time, we can access greater insights and potentials. The th one more theme she suggests is about inner guidance and intuition. State encourages individuals to, to trust their inner guidance and intuition and as a means to na navigate life's challenges and make aligned choices. By cultivating a deep connection with our inner wisdom, we can access profound insights and live in alignment with our true selves. In the end, I would like to end this with a quote, which he mentions that you create your own reality. There are no exceptions to it. The quote encapsulates the core teachings of the state material emphasizing the profound power we hold in shaping our experiences in the, and the world around us to our thoughts, beliefs, and intentions. Sri Ram Gopal, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you all. Uh, I'm sure most of you would have uh, heard about say, or probably had the opportunity to read um, at least one of the 10 books that uh, this world has been or ourselves have been exposed to. Um, say by um, the very definition of say, it is very intriguing subject. Of the many uh, topics that are available um, through Jane Roberts, uh, I think uh, we will just deal on one topic today. Because basically, all Seth books are the inner science. These are the books which actually pushes you into the realms of spiritual science. Otherwise, everything looks abstract. Everything looks realistic. Everything looks well within the meaning of our physical dimension alone. But Seth says, you are not just your physical body. Your conscious self is just a part of a multi-dimensional self. And that multi-dimensional self operates in many realities, of which this 3D reality is just one. You may be operating in the hundreds of realities, in different frequency sets, in different roles. This is exactly where he tries to explain the eternal validity of the soul. My dear friends, we just talk about reincarnational traumas. This is an environment which is more glued to the physical reality. We are engrossed in this reality which we feel that we are not creating or we have not created but created by others. We don't really look at what we undergo, the sorrows, the joys, whatever the environment that is around us, as the one that we have created. We are very much part of it, as much as the entire population of this world, in mass. So we, we think that if everything goes well, it is, I go did it. If it doesn't go well, then we have many to blame. 
we may blame the past karma souls. This is where this particular reincarnation dramas, the the wisdom, the Indian wisdom that Seth has given this particular topic, which actually exposes the myth around the karma that we actually karma we think that the past wrong deeds are the ones which is affecting us today. So that's how we were, you know, we were uh, made to believe all through. That's an understanding that we were put into. But Seth has a different meaning to the whole. This is the subject I would like to share with you in the next 15 minutes. Um, for, for the free readers who have actually gone through some of the Seth books, this particular topic is chapter 4 in the first book of Seth, the series of the eternal validity of so. See, in terms of the daily physical existence and the surroundings that we are in, we are currently connected with. Watch these words that we are currently connected with. That means we are currently connected with the present physical existence. Say, for example, I am speaking, you are hearing, or you are hearing, I am speaking. So, this is what we are currently, this moment, we are connected with. We are so focused in our roles, so focused in our roles, and however intriguing the reality is that what we have created, we are so entranced with the problems, the challenges, the hopes, and the sorrows that are in this environment with which we are connected, right? Our life spins around these things. This is a very intensely moving drama. What we are going through is an intensely moving drama with all this, you know, salt and pepper. We are so intricately, intriguingly focused only in this reality, not knowing that this is just part of our multi-dimensional reality. So, where is this multi-dimensional reality? So, what is this you, we or I? It is only the conscious, conscious self, conscious self that is projected out of the actual multi-dimensional reality. So, my dear friends, Seth actually puts us in a very intriguing position by making us try to understand that the self that we are in at this moment is just a part of the infinite sense that we are acting on. And are we connected with these multidimensional selves? Of course we are. Of course we are. But we have never focused in the other dimensions. Where are these multidimensional selves then? They are well within us. We are just focused out of that multidimensional reality. I just as a finger out of the five fingers. The other fingers are there, but in different realities of life. It could be as as good as opposite to you, next to you, or in other dimension, wherever, whichever it is. But all undergoing a similar set of experiences in their realities, which they have created, and all are connected. That means we can draw the experience of our own self in another dimension because we are connected. And together we play our roles. That means the multidimensional selves in other dimensions can greatly make us experience the current physical self as well. And the communication is instant nano nanoseconds so we have a situation where we think that we have done everything but not we are supported by many multi-dimensional selves of our own self of which we are just one part similarly it is just not our own multi-dimensional self and the conscious self that we are in 
in the play. We have, let us say in this program, we have 102 selves already with their multi-dimensional connectivity. You now just imagine where exactly we are. So when we connect, these selves connect with the other selves in creating a play, creating a, a reincarnational drama, then you can understand the vastness, the richness of the experiences of various selves that goes into the making of our own self in the current environment. And Seth has a, a very different argument here. He says that all dimensions, all realities exist in one go. Seth clearly says that time is not a linear one where events happen one after the other. So this is exactly where there is a lot of confusion. So how can this happen? How can this happen? For me, it is time. So, the time that we actually talk about every moment in our life, in this physical life, is actually not a series, but a pattern. So, if we understand that it is not a series, 6 o'clock this, 6 by something else, 6 15 something else, and that is what we are tuned in. But take it as a parallel, then we will find that the time has no rates. So that is exactly where he says that you may live in what uh, 3D um, life of 200, I mean, uh, 200 BC and uh, 2023 are saying simultaneously. Time is simultaneous. Now, when the time is simultaneous, He says that where is the karma effect of a past life coming in now? Yes, for our understanding, we will say past life and this because we are in this 3D dimension where time is linear. But actually, it is we play different roles in different time bands, drawing experiences from all these. These are our own creations. These are the creations of our own multidimensional self to this conscious self so that it is enriched with these experiences. And this is exactly where the drama is. So these are our own creations. The sorrow is created, the joy is created, every damn thing is created from within to outside. It's not the other way. So all these things about of the multidimensionality. So this is this is not an individual that we are talking about. It is a pure energy. And this energy is what you can say has been condensed in this physical form, in this 3D reality, in a series time zone. This is exactly where we, we find say very intriguing on this subject when he talks about parallel selves. He talks about multidimensionality. He talks about time is not a series, but time is a parallel one. And because we are limited or tuned in with the time series that the world with we are in, this finds very much opposed to our beliefs. Seth says that all these are reincarnational dramas. Whatever we do is, is a perfect drama that we, we act upon it. We have created, we write it, we script it, we don different roles, all at our own volition, not pushed by anyone. We may see, we seemingly appear that somebody would have helped us or pushed us into that. No, it doesn't happen that way at a very micro level, at a multi dimensional level. So, because if we don't understand, this philosophy or this science behind how this happens, then whatever life we are living is the life that we are living without knowing how this, this whole drama is unfolding. 
So Seth, in his various uh, topics that he has spoken in, close to about 100 topics are there, really pushes to the extent of believing that the consciousness that we have has infinite potential. Potential is mind block, mind mind blowing. Because this conscious self draws all its experience and energies from various multidimensional selves in various realities. So if we compound this, we can understand what all we can do. That's exactly what we see in this physical world as well. The evolution that we are in, the human evolution itself we take, it's mind power. Really boggles our mind. And we do not know what will happen maybe in that in this time series 200 years later. Unfathomable. 200 years back, maybe nobody would have imagined the situation of 2023. This is a constant evolution. And do we think that just one Einstein or one you may would have done it? No. It is a confluence, a series of you know experiences that are getting into those cells which are focused on it. And each one's act is different. There can be multidimensional cells which are pushed. Even a multidimensional self of all these hundred people who are there in this program would have pushed Einstein to give his A is equal to MC square. It is as simple as that. You may say that Einstein only did it. Yes. Everything is pushed on to that particular conscious self to actualize the thing. The things, the conscious self that is we or I or you is in a constant state of evolution. It has its own infinite potential or sources to create its play, its drama with its own multidimensional other realities or entwined with the other multidimensional forces or resources or sources that are available. This happens at a very deep, deep, deep inner level. We don't understand them because barring a few moments of our meditation, we are otherwise absolutely focused on the physical reality. And that in our meditation, probably, we just touch and go the real above of it. So, this is what you know, I, I personally feel that some of the great sages, without any telescope, would have measured the distance between earth and sun. How was it possible? Yeah. This, the, the experience of various dimensions of, of his consciousness self would have made him understand. So th this could be very freak um, from a scientific point of view. But it's not. Nothing happens freakishly on this planet because consciousness doesn't do anything without, without its own knowledge. Our mind may not understand it. For example, the consciousness self out of that multidimensional Self, which has created us. Do you think that it has created just like that? The Sunil or the Sri Ram? No. Yeah, when it comes to the mind which actually looks at the outward, the physical 3D reality, yes, that confusion will be there. And the ego actually plays a great role, saying that, yes, I did it, or okay, as a team, we did it. But beyond that, it can't look. But if you, if, if this conscious self actually looks deeper inside, then it will find its own parental multidimensional realities and the multidimensional realities connected with the other, other millions and trillions of multidimensional. So that's, that's the source. That is what actually says the 
eternal validity of the soul. There is, you really look at the canvas, so intriguing, so mind blowing that we can understand that we are just a speck of that energy performing in reality with absolute sense of responsibility. But the mind may say that we are not performing as responsible. There can be certain things which we, we may destroy an environment. Fine. But that's also a play, that's also a drama. Because from those experiences only, so evolves, keeps continuously evolving. There's no, as much as the, it has an infinite source of experience to derive from, project it into the future. The soul has infinite possibilities to keep evolving infinitely. So if we understand this, it brings a sense of responsibility, at least in our 3D image and mind, the kind of responsibility that we should also exhibit. The kind of possibilities, the probabilities that we can actually explore ourselves into, not as a choice, in the physical reality, but from a spiritual science perspective, evolve from the deep within knowledge that we have by accessing it. And of course, the one practical technique to do that is meditation. In fact, in this same recreational, reincarnational dramas, see, clearly talks about a kind of um, consciousness self that may drop in your physical reality, trying to guide you to understand this deeper science. So this one small paragraph which actually made me actually discuss even with Patricia. So it is something like Patricia who has dropped in our physical reality with a purpose to guide uh, the many consciousness selves to understand the deeper multidimensional selves that it is connected with. So we have such kind of props. We, we, we also have that kind of settings. And all this put together, we use all these resources, all these weapons, to create the physical reality that we are in. So this 3D reality that we are, is not just the reality actually that we are in. There are many other realities, unknown realities for this physical one. So this is exactly where our reincar reincarnation dramas are not just the cause and effect, but all happen simultaneously. It is the cause and effect that we talk about is nothing but simple learning. As far as safety is concerned, just simple learning from various experiences. So he strongly says that it is, we suppose that the bad karma happens, happened in past life, is what we are paying for in this life. These are all experiences that we create for ourselves because the soul takes up everything, the consciousness that we are projected in takes on all these realities, creates its realities to have a deeper understanding, deeper uh, you know, evolution in terms of the experience that it gains. So, this particular topic of Rehim Krishna Dhammas actually talks about multidimensionality, the consciousness self that we are, the 3D reality. It also talks about specific guides who come during this drama that we are enacting to guide us into the deeper spiritual science. And it also talks about how this whole canvas, if you look at from that point, 
makes us understand the eternal reality of soul. Thank you. What could be the experience for a soul on this physical plane, sir? So from my understanding, it would be more towards senses, right, sir? I mean, five senses, what we have. Those could be the experience on this plane earth. Like, I mean, eating something or tasting something or smelling something. What could be beyond that for a soul here, really? I mean, you know, what really it could be? I mean, more than understanding the things on this plane. One word. Um, we are focused on our physical senses. That is why, you know, the five senses that we have, they they dictate terms to us, right? To eat or to play or to do whatever, whatever, however these senses, because they create the kind of emotion for us to live. But actually, as, I mean, Relevant to the topic that I spoke today, I'll try to answer all from this particular topic one is if you could remember at the beginning of uh, the, the subject, I, I said, Seth has clearly said that we are so focused in our physical reality, the 3D physical reality, that we are ignorant of the greater things that we are connected with. It is not just limited to uh, the physical senses which we operate day in, day out. They are very much required to, to clear as a GPS of our life that we are alive, right? But there is far more truth behind our existence. It is not just to eat or to feel that we are here. We are here to create things. We are here to learn to actualize the dreams that float of the multidimensionality or the acts that our mind would have, you know, broadcasted with the assistance of the inner selves. But little did we realize because we are engrossed with something else. However, this will happen. It depends on how much we get focused into it. It's not that just the eat and play that we are always focused in. There are many dreams that come. Why will the dream come? Dream is again a source that is coming up. It's just reminding us something else. So if we get focused into it, then that starts actually. So the the essence of our life. We say, what is the purpose of? It's a big question. The purpose of life is very simple. We are here to learn, to actualize, to materialize the way we want. As we materialize things, we master it. The whole multidimensional reality is, you know, living in so many existences, so variety of existences, millions of existences, of which this one that we are living. I mean, this is just one part. So if we can understand this particular canvas, then we'll understand that we are not limited to the physical senses. The powerful greater things that we have to do. The mind may play front with us and then we may defocus on something else and waste the limited time that we have, a series of limited time. So it's right. far we the more you develop deeper into it through meditation, then we we get to know better things to do without limiting to the physical senses. For beginners, uh, we want to understand this particular word called reality and dimension, sir. But reality is simple. You just ask me a question that is reality. The dimension that you are talking about, yes, your environment, yourself, your parents, your siblings, your friends, your house, your TV, the environment that you live, your force, all this is the environment, 
called the dimension 3D dimension. So you are trying to live in this particular 3D dimension where you are not the only one. There are 800 crore population on this planet. This whole earth is one dimension. Break it up to the individual level, each one has its has its own dimension of reality. It's not just created by your parents or your friends alone. You are also a significant part. In fact, your part is much more than anyone, as much as to the extent it is connected. Apart from this, apart from this, this is your 3D focus, right? You're focused into this, what you see from your eyes outward. But if you dwell deeper into within, then you will understand that this, this particular projection, the physical projection that you are right now, is connected with multi dimensions. I've been hearing about the Seth wisdom from a quite long time. So, where exactly can we start using the Seth wisdom practically in our uh, spiritual journey, sir? It happens automatically. You think about um, that your consciousness self, the Prithvi that you are, has infinite source, like a bank balance. You have an infinite bank balance. What will you do? You'll start creating more. Right? So likewise, you have infinite experience. You're not just Prithvi. So what will you do with it the moment you realize it? Your, your creativity, your actualization will be much more, much more, deeper and deeper, more beneficial, you know, to the, to the environment that you are in. This is what happens when you get deeper into this. And where to start from? It happens automatically. The moment you focus, yeah, you, you have touched the right chord. It automatically flows into you, to your dream states, to your mind, to your ego. You, you play a different game from what you are doing right now. So to get to that focus, uh, is there anything that we need to do, sir? Just let it take one, one super technique. How do you how do you tip into the vast reservoir of uh, experience or energy? Simple thing is to meditate. Don't take quite twenty hours to meditate. Only a research a scientist, research artist would do it. But I think in a um, normal life, and our meditation to a couple of hours should do very good. And read these books. So as you go deeper into meditation, and as you get tuned in to those frequencies, these books, you know, these are props created by, say, through Jane Roberts, by, say, or through various wisdom share sharings of Patriji. Or many gurus prepare, right? These are these are uh, what you can say as the propellers to a different plane. These are created for us, not for consumption of seth alone. So when we uh, we'll get the right book in our hands when we are ready, which will propel us to a different project. So don't worry about where to start. The moment you think that I have to start. And add some uh, masala called meditation, and then you are straight on the track. I said I have actually tried reading this uh, Nature of Reality book, uh, but uh, I couldn't go beyond uh, two three pages because it was really difficult for me to get into that. Uh, deep vocabulary and that conversation thing. So, so is there any uh, easy way to understand uh, the Seth material, sir? The easy way to understand is to elevate your energy to understand. I mean, I hope you understood what I mean. I, I got it. Yes. And uh, how do you do that? Read it in a series. 
Okay. The first book is Safe Material. Okay. Oh, we've got written in some 60s. Then into the 70s, Safe Speaks. So you can directly get into Safe Speaks. Spend at least six months on it. So I'm telling you what it is. I can't tell something else. And uh, each chapter that you go through, spend as much time relating each word and sentence in paragraph. Your experience in this physical life. They will somehow, the dots will get connected. It will give you a deeper understanding. So I suggest it will take at least at least six months. Just for six to, to understand the real beauty of the knowledge, the wisdom that was shared. Then from then on, all the other books, the nature of psyche, nature of personal reality, all the you know, deeper, deeper, deeper subjects. Uh, I mean, they would look very fantastic. Okay, sir. So you are suggesting to start with Seth material, Seth speaks first and then go with the series, right? Okay, sir. Don't jump over into other things because you may lose the foundation. So um, we just saw the quote saying that you create your reality and there's no exception for it. So are we really creating our reality or are we just witnessing the reality that is being created, sir? So do we really have that control over the reality? You are a player, not a spectator. Not watching the cinema. You are actually playing your role. You are actually playing your role. If you say that you are... Uh, just watching an observer, then what is the control you have on your life? The control on your experiences. Life is there to experience in its full beauty. That's the very purpose of your existence here. So, play your part. Losing to be a spectator for a while is good. But not always necessary. Here to play our part, we should play it well. So, you mean to say that we have complete control in controlling uh, reality? Absolutely. What we don't, you know, realize, or rather, there may be incident in life which your mind says that you are not a part of it. Well, it has come in from a different dimension to be experienced by you. Take it that way, I think. Then you will understand. Then because that without you acting, you have already got the experience. Thank you.